Hey guys, in this episode I'm going over my quick and simple process for making gameplay icons that you can use for any gameplay prototyping. So my simple philosophy is to use the thing in the world to create the icon. And maybe this is obvious, but whenever you're creating an icon, which is a visual representation of the thing in the world, you should probably use the thing in the world to create the icon. And so for me, this is typically either going to be a Niagara system for gameplay abilities, like the fire abilities we've been working on, or in some cases, a static mesh. So before we go any further, just make sure you already have the mesh built or the Niagara system or whatever you're going to use to actually create this icon. And the way I do this, it's actually really simple. So I always create a backup system. And in that backup system, I just go to file, I do a new level, we do a basic level, create. And the first thing I do is I bring in a cube. So I just search up here for cube and select cube. And then I just scale it up a little bit. So it's going to be one by 20 by 20. And then I move it up and I also move it out a little bit. So the next thing is figuring out, okay, what color is our icon actually going to be? Because that's our backdrop color. So my icons are all going to be black. So I just search for black here, choose black background. Now we can duplicate this, control C copy, control V paste. And for the second one, I'm just going to make it 20 by 20 by one. And that's going to serve as the floor. So I'll put that right about there. I think I'll also move it out a little bit. So now it's time to pull in whatever you're going to use for the icon itself. So for this, I go to my content drawer. I've already got under Niagara gameplay abilities, fire our torchlight. And this is what we created in episode 23 of this series. So I'll drag this in and I want to lower it down, put it pretty close to the bottom, not so that it's underneath like that, but something like about there, maybe a little bit higher. And the other thing is you might need to tweak some things in a Niagara system to really get the effect that you want. And that's what I'm going to do here. And since it's a backup environment, I don't need to worry about saving it or anything. So we'll go back into that system and the two things I'm going to tweak. So in the emitter summary here, I'm going to change it. So the temperature maximum is down to 2000. That's just going to make it a lot brighter. And then the other thing I'm going to do is under add velocity in cone, we're going to increase the maximum velocity strength to about 400. And that's going to shoot up the flame a lot higher. And the other thing I'm going to do is under the source particles emitter under add velocity in cone, I'm just going to increase this considerably. So it's going to go up to 600 there and then save that. And so there we go. Now we have a much more dynamic fire effect. Now, if I were about to create an icon with a static mesh, I would come up here. I'd search for a point light. And actually, we need two point lights. If you've ever been like a photographer's studio, they always have a couple of lights aimed directly at the object. So typically what I do is I put those in a diagonal position kind of above and down. And then I duplicate the light, move it over to an adjacent position. And then I increase the intensity on those lights to the point where, you know, whatever I'm trying to illuminate, whatever that static mesh is, it looks good in front of the black background. But in our case, because it's just a Niagara system, we don't need the point lights. I can delete those out. The last thing you probably want to do to get a clean screenshot is under settings, under project settings, I recommend turning off motion blur. So if we search for motion blur, just keep that disabled here, not in your actual game, but just for these screenshots. And for the next part, honestly, I do this in a really unsophisticated way, but it's fast and efficient. And if you have a better way of doing this, that's almost equally fast and efficient that actually makes things look nicer, I would be very interested to know your method. So please post in the comments below. But what I do is I literally hit begin play. And back in episode five of this series, uh, I made the ability to be able to zoom into my character with the mouse wheel. So I can just get up really close. And then once I'm really close, I just look for an opportune moment when the fire seems just about right. And I try to time it right. And then I print screen. And then if it doesn't look good, I just do it again. Actually, sometimes for a Niagara system, I take a bunch of these screenshots just to make sure I get a good one. And this looks pretty good to me. And then I simply crop it. And so now we're done with Unreal Engine for a bit so we can minimize. And the program that I use for actual image editing is a freeware. It's a free program and it's called GIMP. And I find it works really well. I use this to create all my thumbnails. So once you have GIMP open, we're going to create a new project. So file new and the image size of all of these icons is going to be 512 by 512. I find that works very well. And so now back to my really unsophisticated way of doing this. So we take our copy and pasted image. So I'm just going to select all here, control C copy, and then come over to GIMP and paste. And it might take a second or two to show up and you'll see that the image looks a little bit too big. So the first thing we got to do is we got to scale our layer a little bit. Now, if you're not familiar with GIMP, GIMP uses a layer system and all those layers kind of stack on top of one another to create the final image. And we see that we have two layers here on the right. And this floating selection layer means it hasn't yet been anchored. It's still kind of there to be edited. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer over here and we're going to scale the layer. I'm going to switch over to percent. 
we're going to scale the image probably about 60% scale. So that looks pretty good, but I think I can actually scale it down just a little bit more. So I'll do control Z just to undo and then we'll do layer scale layer. And instead I'll do about 55%. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then the other thing I often do here is I rotate the image to the left or right a little bit. I think this one, I want to rotate it a little bit to the left. So we can go to tools, transform tools, rotate and say an angle of like, let's say two degrees and that rotates to the right. So actually it's going to be negative two and maybe I'll make it like negative four. Yeah, that looks a little bit better and then rotate. And then once this is looking good, we can anchor the layer so we can right click and then anchor layer. And now before I add any additional effects to this, I always duplicate it just to make sure if I mess it up, I always have a pristine copy to go back to. So right click and we're just going to duplicate the layer and then I can hide that one. So now we can go to select all. And the first thing I often do is the smudge tool. So I really like this. I often make the size very small. I lower the hardness and the force a little bit and I smudge all the really rough edges, especially for fire. So something like this edge right here, I just smudge it a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I also do the same for some other areas. And you can always control Z to undo if you don't like the effect that something has. Don't overdo it. Sometimes I find that just doing a little bit of touching up just makes a big difference. And then another tool that I often use is the erase. So if I have a certain part of it where I just want to erase that part, doesn't look good, I can use the erase. Now here, I tried the erase a little bit and the erasing doesn't look good because actually the background is not entirely black because this is actually giving off light. So if you erase, it's going to leave it with a black background. It's not going to look so good. So blurring or smudging, that typically looks better. And then the last thing I typically do is the color balance. So we go up to colors, we go to color balance. And for this, I find that for fire, you know, raising the scion, scion, I think it's scion, that actually makes it a little bit more red and lowering the magenta. Yeah, it's kind of a neat effect. And raising the yellow a little bit. You could play with this. I wouldn't go too over the top, but something like, uh, maybe not that red, maybe just like a little red, right? Something like that. Yeah, it's like a little bit more red than it is. That looks pretty good. And then the last thing is for colors, I go to brightness contrast and I typically raise both the brightness and the contrast a little bit. Yeah, so the brightness is up a little bit, contrast is up a lot. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I wanna keep some of the smoke effect, so I don't wanna raise the contrast so much so that it gets rid of the smoke. So something maybe like right about there and the raising the brightness, yeah, we can lower that down, say okay, and probably a good idea to save this now. So go to file, we'll do a save as, and I specifically have a folder for my ability icons here, and I'm just gonna call this one, we're gonna call it Torchlight One and save. And then the last thing I do before I export is I actually round the edges of the image here in GIMP. Now you can do it in Unreal Engine by creating a material and then rounding the edges in the material. But I saw the explanation for that and it just seemed far more complex than I wanted to go down. I just find the process here in GIMP to be really easy. So the way I do this is I go to filters, I go to decor, and then we're going to round corners. And the setting here that's key is the edge radius. So I make this about 30. And then all these other things, I just make zero, zero, zero. And I'm going to add a background, but I'm not going to work on a copy. Basically, this effect is going to be applied directly to this file. So now we've got our background and you see the white edges there. That's where it's being rounded off. So I can come over to background here, make sure we have an alpha channel on that background. And then I do a select all and you can just hit delete. And then when the edges turn to that gray and black, that just means it's now transparent. You've got a completely rounded edge image. And the last thing I'm going to do before I export this is I'm just going to export the top layer. So I'm going to disable these two layers. I'm going to save them in the image just so I can always come back to it. Torchlight one. And to export this, we go to file and we do an export as, and it's going to be torchlight one.png export. Now, when you get this screen, I don't change a thing. I just say export. So we are done with GIMP. I'm going to minimize this and we'll open the folder. So this is our ability icon folder that I exported to. So now we can go back into Unreal Engine and in Unreal Engine, I actually created a folder specifically for our icons. And so I think I made that under blueprints, under gameplay ability pickup, and then under icons here. And so now we can just take our torchlight icon, drag it in, go back to our content drawer and there it is. So at this point, I'm just gonna go back to my main level. We're going to try this out. So I'll go to file, I'll go to open level, go back to third person maps, our third person map. And it's asking me if I want to save all this. I'm going to say, don't save. It's up to you, really. If you want to have a level specifically for this stuff, then by all means, save it. So now I'm going to select our gameplay ability torchlight actor here in this case. And what I'm going to do is switch out the ability icon, which is I pick something totally random to start. Come back to our content drawer and let me just drag in our torchlight. Boom. 
So now let's test this out. Pick up our torchlight. Yep. Okay. So we got our three icons. And let's test dragging them. We can drag it over. We can drag it over here. We can drag it over here. And yeah, we are good to go. The one other thing I wanted to mention is if you decide after you bring it into Unreal Engine that you want to change up your ability icon in some regard, you could totally do that. So let's say, for example, let's say I select my entire layer here. So I do a select all and maybe I want to change the fire to be blue. Some people like blue fire. So we'll go to colors, we'll go to color balance and then the yellow. I'm going to move this all the way out. That gives it kind of a purplish feel. Cyan, I'll move it down. Magenta. Yeah, if you want like a light blue, you go out there and let's see something like that yeah that's kind of crazy actually we're gonna have to change the darkness too and we'll also go back to colors and then brightness contrast and we'll change the brightness and the contrast well, not that how about so no that looks terrible how about somewhere like i don't know i'm just messing around guys but the point is that you could then export this so let's do export as we'll do torchlight blue and then export but then you could just bring in a new icon or you could just name it the same thing. And as soon as you bring it in, if it's named the same thing, it's just going to overwrite whatever was there before. So that wraps up this five part series on gameplay ability UI. And although it's not going to be the final UI for our game, it's enough. We've got the ability to actually test out gameplay fully. And so that brings us back to gameplay and an issue with our flamethrower ability or really any channeled ability in our game i didn't actually see until after the flamethrower episode and that is the fact that if i'm jumping in midair and i hit the flamethrower ability well he's just sitting there standing there in midair but in our next episode no longer an issue so i'm gonna hit to the flamethrower ability as soon as i jump up and it waits until he actually lands before it casts the other thing we're doing here is we're adjusting our foot IK automatically based on whatever surface he lands on top of. So I hope to see you there.